To a time when we were young Before our innocence was gone We go way back A bit later tonight, it's 22 past 10. It's the Wednesday nightcap, but at the moment there are only two glasses. Andrew McLaren, good evening to you. <laughs> Andrew. Oh, oh, Dennis. I'm sorry, mate. You haven't had your Horlicks yet. I just drifted off for a second there. <laughs> oh, how are you, buddy? Oh, no, buddy. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thanks, Philip. Um, listen to me, Andrew. Where, where, where are you in the house and what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm just going through a bit of nostalgia. Right. I've dug out an old suitcase. I found a tape, a reel-to-reel tape. It's of my father at a party. Oh, in the early 1960s. And I'm just going to play a little bit of the tape. We used to, I've got the old Grundig fired up. Right. And we'll just hear a little bit of it. Uh, ten seconds. Right, go ahead. I think it's it. Hang on. Right, this is good. It's got disaster written all over it. Yeah, I think it's going to be there. No, it's not. So we'll forget that and we'll go move on to other matters. <laughs> what? A... Hey, where's the third person? Um, have you ever heard the expression MIA? Yeah, missing an action. I'm not sure Where... the A stands for action. <laughs> anyway, yes. but uh, we had a few guys like that, lead pullers, when I'm in my outfit during the big one. And uh, they don't go down well with me. What big one? The, the 1964 Volleyball Championship? No, no, no. The great uh, dust-up outside the Melbourne Town Hall Jazz Dance. Listen to me, Andrew. Oh, John has called in. Hi, John. Uh, I just wanted to ring up and say what a great effort it was tonight with 3AW, and thank you very much for your description. Well, that's, uh, that's my, that was my pleasure and honour to be a part of it, uh, John. I was invited to the evening, but obviously I was going to be here, so there was no way I could be there. But I just felt like we learned so much more about Michael Gadinsky, things that I had not heard of, and the, the enormity of uh, his life and uh, the impact was, was breathtaking, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very, very good. I was riveted to the show. Thank you, Dennis. That's a pleasure. Thank you, John, for your call. Andrew, could I just ask you, um, what are you dressed in? Uh, I have on, uh, I have on all oh, rather fancy new pair from um, Peter Alexander pajamas. They just, they just hang beautifully. The material is so good. Now I have, no, I paid full price for these. But I'm telling you, if you want really luxury pyjamas, you've got to go somewhere like this. My skin, it's, it's, it's absolutely being caressed by them. You know what I mean? You don't wear them. You, you float them on. What colour, Andrew? They're a sort of a two or three ton blue check. Big check. So it's your duck egg. You're still hanging around the duck egg blue. <laughs> well, there's a duck egg in there. But, main, main, but there's a duck egg main... in your, in your pyjama pants. Let me put a call out to it. And there'll be so many men and women, I guess, too. Uh, who will not realise that you can still get, at a place like Peter Alexander, a pyjama with a, a pocket on, uh, on the jacket, which I love, what? and a beautiful drawstring and elastic, elastic on the, on the, uh, the pants. Because you wear elastic, like trousers, don't you? Elastic things. You don't well, have... it's all, it's pretty well, I'm pretty well Velcroed up now. I've got Joanne to sew a lot of it in. Uh, you know, where it never used to be. In fact, I guess Velcro socks, uh, you know, when I wear them. I want to ask you that because you don't wear socks, uh, which well, made me th- think today when I was thinking about talking to you tonight, whether you wear um, jocks if you don't wear socks. Oh, yeah, I wear jocks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We've got not pursued that topic anymore. No, further. I thought it was a bit of a mystery of, you know, what, what lies beneath. <laughs> you don't want to know. Joanne doesn't want to know. No one wants that, to know. Is that, okay. is that why she's Velcroed you up? <laughs> yes. And she, is, uh, has a, she has her own, <laughs> shall we say, no, go on. There'll be no escape for anything. No. <laughs> Nothing emerges. It's all beautifully done. Right. Packaged uh, beautifully. Uh, look, topic time, of course, Dennis. Uh, no, Andrew, you're hosting, not next week, but the week after, and that's when you take over. Andrew, do you have a topic? Thank you, Dennis. Uh, 
And I, I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't know if there's going to be much of a response to this. So I've got a sort of a backup topic, OK? Based but, on recent weeks, there will be not one call. Oh, no, that's not right. No. And that's not fair. Oh, no, you had a cracker one last week, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, thank you. That was way out of line, Walters. All right? There's the whip that you love so much. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah come on now. Put it together. Okay. What's your topic, Andrew? Get to the point. Have you ever made your own beer? I was watching a, a thing on a Lifestyle Channel, you know, one of the yes. Nine Gem or one of those, and this guy, it was American, but he'd made, my good, barrels and barrels of beer, and it apparently was really fabulous. Have you ever done it? What was the result? I believe it takes a long time to ferment, though. I believe there's all sorts of problems that you, well, obviously you don't get when you buy it across the shelf. But um, have, you done, have you actually made wine? Have you ever tried that? I believe it can be done. You uh, don't have to have a, a vineyard as such. Um, it's interesting. I know um, of a street in Geelong where the neighbours all got together with grapes and started making their own wine. And uh, it's actually gone on that one of them has uh, opened up, and I'm just trying to think of the name of it. It's on the way to Anglesey. It's on the right just after the Torquay turn-off, and it's actually turned into a, a life and business for him. Isn't that great? It's yeah, fantastic. Well, I have a little, you know, acorns, mighty oaks grow and all that, all that stuff, all those cliches. But have you ever made your own beer, a wine, any kind of alcohol, and what's it been like? Any good? And also, may I throw in, because I don't know if we're going to get a, exactly a board full of calls on that, but... Have you ever run into, and again, this came from just a TV program I saw uh, yesterday, whatever, uh, an old romantic partner years later? And what was it like? I mean, have you just come across someone you haven't, you know, once upon a time you were very special to each other, but the years have uh, parted you, and then once again you've, you've locked eyes in shocking surmise somewhere. So, sometimes, it ends up in, sometimes it ends up in marriage. Guess who we've found, Andrew, just for a five minute tonight? Beg your pardon? Oh, we found... Hello, how's your hearing? What? Darren James, good evening to you. Oh, no. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm told you're feeling a bit flat after the Michael Gavinsky uh, memorial service. Well, uh, it was great coverage, and you did a fantastic job, Dennis. Thank just, you. Uh, throwing, you know, uh, as Shane Healy was it, he used to say. Paint the picture. Painting the, painting the picture. But, uh, oh, gee, what a, what a send-off. What a... Stunning. There was everyone was there. What were they? Because we we thought that I would be doing a lot of padding while people made their way to the stage. It was a beautifully produced tribute to the man. And were you like yeah. me? Did you learn a pile of things that you didn't realise? Learned learned so much. And and I was just he's a dear friend of mine. And I was uh, we were in touch with him this afternoon. He was the MC, and he was as nervous as all get out as any of us would be. He to, was brilliant. To present such a service, Lee Simon, how good was he? He was absolutely superb. It was like watching someone hosting the Oscars. It was very classy. Oh, he, he was brilliant. I don't know why, why he needed to be nervous, but I think it's healthy to be nervous. But he did a fantastic job. And did, did, did we find out how many people were there? Well, it's, it looked a little bit um, lean at the beginning, but by the end, it was absolutely, uh, I think it was chock-a-block. So uh, a fitting tribute to the great man. Yeah, and what about Ed Sheeran or Sharon? Do you, I call him Sharon like the football. Yeah, during the football, but, you can call him the Sharon, but it's Sharon. <laughs> right. But for him to come over and do two weeks, uh, two weeks in, in solitary confinement just to, you know, to be here for the he was, for tonight. He was actually in quarantine. He wasn't in solitary confinement. He didn't do <laughs> it at Port Phillip. That's, that's right. It's Andrew that goes into solitary confinement. Yeah, but that's because when, Uki locks him in the room. Because Uki locks him in the room. But no, I thought it was outstanding. I look, I've just joined you. Have I missed anything? No. You... I didn't think we'd be on, quite frankly. Yeah, well, it was about, it ended up being about, oh, we thought it might go to 9.45 and it went to about 7 or 8 past 10. So they, yeah. f they fitted well, a lot in. Well, it was, I was listening to it on 3 w and it was streamed on one of the, uh, the streamers. So we were watching it as well as listening to it. So I was at full speed. So that's why... Uh, apologies for being late, but I, I didn't think because it went so late. Well, like, what time is it now? Twenty to eleven or something? No, it's twenty-nine to eleven. Have you said hello, yeah. Darren, to Andrew? Oh, hello, Andrew. Hello, Darren. I love to hear your voice. Wonderful, and uh, yes, it was a wonderful tribute to a great Melbourneian, wasn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, did you ever meet him, Andrew? No, never met him. No, no. I, I moved more in the world of cabaret, more than the world of rock, you know, uh, stadium shows. Oh, that's right. There's so, with the smoking jacket, the, uh, bit the Stan, burgundy uh, he's velvet. A, he's a bit jacket. Stan Munro, Andrew. <laughs> no, not <laughs> Stan Munro. No, I'm talking about the top hat in Burke Street and places like that. and uh, Capers. Uh, yeah, and the, yeah, and the one down, oh, I can't think of its name, down on the Beach Road in Hampton, too. I can't think of that cabaret. Oh, No, no, no. <laughs> Start with a V or something. Anyway, so I've gone blank. Doesn't matter. Uh, but that was been, more my world. You've been blank life. since '83. Uh, J- Darren, what the Lido, didn't you? <laughs> oh, the Lido in Russell Street. Yes, in yes. Russell Street. That's right. Darren, I once saw an Adagio act there. It was very good. But the, my goodness me, I was with a date on a first date, and uh, that it, Jeff? They were, no, no. She, the, <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. And the, the girl was, the Diageo act was practically naked and the man's flinging her around. Well, and what they, did you expect? And that well, was, I didn't know it was going to be a part of the night's entertainment. What did you expect them to be in their Peter Alexander pyjamas or something? <laughs> no, I, I just got along to see Daryl Stewart there in uh, Cabaret. He used to take his <laughs> shirt Darryl off at the end of his act. <laughs> he did, I think, too. Yes, he did. My word, he did. Who's Daryl Stewart? Daryl Stewart used to be on Sound of Music, and he was a tenor, and he lived in Sydney. He was in incredible shape, uh, even as a very, very mature person. But at the end of his act, Darren, he'd take his shirt off. Oh, I, I remember, you know, remember Hale and Pace, the two comics? Yes, very England? funny. Very funny. Their, their tag was they used to come out in a dinner suit and then farewell to everyone and say goodbye, thanks for coming along. And they'd get their pants caught on something as they turned around and walked off. And would walk, walk off with their bare buttocks exposed to the audience. Gee, it was funny. That's my kind of humour, Andrew. <laughs> you would have liked Kevin and Eris. Eris and Kevin when they were on the Mike Walsh show and they appeared in their sort of pantsuit without any uh, material over the buttocks. Oh, that's, oh that's, yes. That's, 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 and I think that's ringing a bit low for normal. laughs, isn't it? No, we <laughs> But that's we your love normal it. wear down to the news agent, isn't it, Andrew? Yes, that's exactly what he wears. He's yes. he's going to have the buttocks cut out of his Peter Alexander pyjamas tomorrow by hey, Uki. Hey, Andrew, are you in a phone box again or what? No, 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 I'm at home. I'm in the study. I've just been looking through old uh, paraphernalia and memorabilia from uh, my parents' era, and it's just marvellous. And uh, I, Can I just play? I have lined it up. There's a bit of tape uh, oh. recorded at a party. How long does I this go say- for? Oh, 20 seconds. I mean, the whole thing goes back five minutes, but I'll play 20, 10 seconds even. Yeah, I think this is take two. This is, this is Dad. Doing an um, adagio. Well, it, it, dreadful sound, but this is Dad. Uh, he's got a few in, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you know, he's enjoyed a party and enjoyed the beer. Can we get uh, on with it? At a party, here we go. <laughs> It's just lovely for me to hear Dad's voice again like that. You still with us, Darren? That is bizarre. And I can just you imagine imagine you as a little eight year old in your pajamas just standing next to him watching him. Well I'd be watching from the staircase. I wasn't allowed into the party, so I'd be looking down and that would be, uh, you know, oh, it was quite the life of the party. Anyway, Andrew, that's just, you know. Andrew, can I just interrupt you? I've forgotten what your topic was. Uh, oh, have you ever brewed beer or made wine, As it, uh, maybe in your street? nine six nine hundred six nine three. Darren James, off to Nine Eyes for you. Well, can I just, uh, can I promote, too, the fact that I've been up to the Grampians for yes. the last two days. Yes. Uh, and I'll be doing an hour special on what an outstanding area it is and the town surrounding the Grampians. Andrew uh, and Dennis, especially you, Dennis, because of your country news affiliation, you'd, you'd know a bit about Stall, Horsham, Hamilton, yes. uh, Ararat. They're the towns that surround the Grampians. They all want Melburnians to go up and live there. Did you know Hamilton has 180 jobs ready to go as we speak across I- all vocations? I didn't know that, but I do know that I've got a very good friend in Jeff Lovell who uh, used to have the Grampians Motel. I presume he's still got it. Uh, it's a right. gorgeous part of the world. Oh, cheap housing, great jobs, fresh air. If you were young and had a young family, why wouldn't you? 
That's a very good question, Darren, and I, I appreciate that you've come on the program, but you both need to shut up for about five minutes because we need to get it to a commercial <laughs> oh, break. Sorry. And I have people well, screaming in my ear. Am I going now or am I hanging on? It's up to you. We'll, we'll see you decide during the commercials, but when, and you're under no pressure to stay with me. But, Andrew, you are. I want you to stay till 1 a.m. back shortly. It is the Wednesday Nightcap. Andrew McLaren is with me. He is in his study at home. He's going through old bits and pieces of his uh, memorabilia of his family. But he did ask the question, have you ever brewed beer or perhaps made wine with your friends? Tony, good evening. Hi, how are you going? Good. Look, uh, first, thanks for that great tribute tonight. That was that was really good. Um, I was hoping it was going to be on telly, but it... It didn't, so I sat out in the shed and listened to the whole thing well, uh, on 3 It was great. Well, good on you. I'm um, glad we did it, and it's uh, it was very moving but very uplifting, and what an incredible story of a fellow who opted out of um, study, much to his uh, father's dismay at that time, because he just knew what his direction was in life and uh, followed it, and whoa, I learned so much about him, and I thought I knew just about everything about him, but tonight was uh, exceptional, Tony. Have you done a bit yeah. of brewing? Yeah, done a bit of brewing, mate. Back in the in the early days in the seventies, people used to brew beer, and it, it sort of used to taste like Vegemite. Now I like Vegemite, but you don't like your beer tasting like Vegemite. But I had, I had dabbled uh, a bit at, at playing with a few different brews, and um, basically, if you home brew, there's there's two real basic rules. You've got to keep everything real clean. Um, you've got to you've got to sanitise everything before you put the you make your water up. If you if you do that at home, or you can go to places that do grain brewery and all that sort of stuff and your bottles have to be absolutely clean follow the instructions on the sugar because no one likes their beer bottles exploding in their garage and um basically yeah i've, I've had a couple of really good home brews that's great you can make them strong you can make them tasty I, I like the european style brew so you've got to work out what sort of hops you want to put in with it and all that sort of stuff but what a great hobby How much sugar uh, it is, but <laughs> it, it, it's one of those hobbies too that um, you can get overindulge a little bit in too. <laughs> you sort of you go for a, a good strong beer, and oh, some of them can be mighty strong, but some really good tasty stuff, mate. And that it's it's worth a try. But in in Melbourne, especially with our variable weather, the other part of brewing is you've got to keep it constant temperature, a oh. dark place. Oh. And it's got to be kept round about, most stuff is around about 25C. If you get a hot day and you brew in the summer and it's 40 degrees in the garage, your brew is going to go off. Now, this is interesting, Tony. Thank you for giving us an insight. Andrew, um, I, I don't like to do this on, on the radio without asking you sort of, or giving you a bit of a heads up, but could Darren and I and you use your garage? <laughs> I just get together a couple of times a week. You know, bit of a chat, bit of a brew. Oh. <laughs> Chew the Sit fat. Out there and sample our wares, eh? Oh, just and, just to get together, you know, all in our Peter Alexander pajamas. <laughs> well, I, before that would happen, I would demolish the garage. I'll tell you that there would be. A, it's never, ain't gonna happen, boy. It just ain't gonna. Happen. Where's Darren? Darren's gone. Well, he's gone. Nine eyes. He was a bit emotional, a uh, genuinely emotional uh, after the concert. So he's. Um, He's 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 possibly having a home brew. I don't know. It's, well, that's lovely for him, but my goodness me, it's amazing. He doesn't put, uh, you mean he's not putting in like he used to? Well, I, I'm not going to say that. Well, not to you, but I mean, I I certainly have got to mention it in Sydney, don't I? At HQ, I mean, I, I mean, Mr. The lovely Mr. Greg Burns, I was on conversation with the other day, and. Uh, the equally fabulous Tom Malone. Boy, what a find he is for what? this, uh, the Nine Network. Why, why do I feel like you are just checking your memory for their names? <laughs> no, hang on. I took Greg and Tom out on the harbour last week for some fishing. Now, I know them well. Don't worry about that. And that <laughs> motorboat cost a fortune to rent. What, what sort of a motorboat was it? Well, it was a thirty-footer. Did you have? Did you have your little white captain's cap on? I, I rented one of those too, and, and you would have been white... doing arm hearties and all that rubbish. Oh, no. You know, the parrot on my shoulder. No, I didn't do that sort of the pirate stuff. But no, it was very nice to entertain them and uh, and get to know you know the people who inspire and motivate you in life. Your greasing to senior management has gone way beyond reasonable. 
We'll talk more about this after the break. Andrew, are you there? Always here. Andrew, Ready to serve. Andrew, a story has just come through on Twitter. Yeah. That you're not going to believe. The Daily Mail online has just posted a photo um, of the, the end of something that has uh, happened to a man, a Thai man. He has excreted a 59-foot tapeworm. What a wonderful story. He, oh, that, I'm, he, gonna, I'm serious. That for the rest of my life. I'm serious. He went to the doctor because of excessive flatulence. Oh, oh dear. Or oh, maybe I... 50, I think about that, months. Andrew. 59 oh, feet. 59. Good God. The <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I'm feeling sorry for him. Yeah, and that flatulence thing too. Yes. That's I am. He wouldn't have I, had I, his, his, uh, his jammies on like you. <laughs> Mine get a bit windy at times. I'll leave it at that, you know. So maybe I, I should check. Uh, Kevin is online. Hi, Kevin. Hello, um, Dennis. Dennis, Andrew, and Darren. Darren's gone, but carry on. Darren's gone. All right. A um, three AW done a beautiful broadcast of Michael Kaczynski tonight. Beautiful it was. Well, we were the only, as I understand it, radio station in the states yeah. who uh, who did it. So we're very proud of that. It's so sad because everyone should have done it and also had it on TV as well. Also, too, Andrew McLaren, you must be so sad today. Why that is that? People want to ban the gay time ice cream. Oh, yes, that's your fa- that used to be your favourite, Andrew. Well, my very favourite. Well, I, th- I think the, the name they want to change, you know, that's because it's become insensitive or something. Oh, I please. know. What, what do they call it, though? I mean, what, what are you going to call it? The LGBTQ2 ice cream? I mean, you got, how, do you, how politically correct does it have to be? I have no idea. I say leave it alone. Oh, same here. We all know that gay used to mean another thing in another era and all that. Now, yeah, for God, if you don't know, well, it you used, know. It used to mean what you represented, and that's why you used to have one at the Moorabbin Milk Bar on your way home from a radio station uh, down in, in, in Frankston. I did too. And this, on the des- way back. <laughs> this describes you beautifully: carefree, cheerful, or bright and showy. That's you, bright and showy. And I bet you haven't had a gay time probably for forty time, forty years, and or more, Dennis. Well, knowing you, I haven't got a sweet tooth, but I, ha- I can honestly say to you that I used to like the Bulla, which was renamed, different uh, thing made in Colac, the um, uh, King Cone type thing, and I did like uh, gay times. Oh, wow. That's a first of all, something for you, unusual for you. Yes, it was. Um, Paul, good evening. Yeah, g'day. I've just got a quick one. When you were talking about the, um, the fellow with the tapeworm Oof. and went to the doctors because he had flatulence. Yeah. Yeah, well, a mate of mine, he went to the doctors. He said, oh, I've got excessive wind. Can you give me something for it? <laughs> the bloke came back in 10 minutes later. He gave him a kite. That's right. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> oh. oh, dear, oh dear. It's all a bit rough around this time of the night, isn't it, on Wednesday? It really needs a bit of uplifting, but it's a bit too late for this week to fix it. Uh, doctor, doctor, I keep imagining I'm a billiard ball. We'll get to the end of the queue. Uh, Paul, thank, oh. thank you very much for your call. Sean. Good evening. That man with the tape water must have felt a weight lift off him after he got that out of him. Yes. 59 uh-huh. feet of it, Sean. Oh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty big tape worm. Well, they got a photo of it. There's a photo on Twitter. Daily Mail Online have posted it. I must have a look. And I was bringing up to talk about um, brewing. Yes, Sean, go ahead. My mother used to make um, ginger beer. It didn't, wasn't supposed to be alcoholic, but if it sat in the cupboard long enough, the bottles used to explode. If you drank it, before, just before they exploded, you got drunk on it. Right, and did that happen by accident? Yeah, that happened by accident. There we are, Andrew. It's another thing we can do in your garage. Yeah, a bit of ginger beer. So well, the fermentation process can turn ginger into something alcoholic, can it? Well, you put sugar and everything in it. I don't know. I'm a, I'm, I've never liked ginger, but uh, no ginger beer. But uh, I, yeah, I, my wife. I've got a wife who loves it. Maybe I, I, know, I know the reason why now. Sean, thank you for your call. Andrew, we've got the quiz coming up. If anyone wants to play nine six nine hundred six nine three.
Um, we're going to take calls up until 11. We'll do the quiz straight after the news. But, Sean, thank you. Andrew, Uki is pining for you. <laughs> I can hear a call right now. Yes, yeah, stay out. I think I just heard in the no, distance. It's a, it's only, only I and a few Kelpies can hear it. It's a very high pitch sound, but uh, I know it and I've got to respond to it, Dennis. You'll it, understand. Has she moved on from Petticoat Junction? We know she's very nostalgic with yeah, her no, telly. It's, it's, it's still um, the A team, you know, with Mr. T. Hey, shut up, you fool. You know, she loves all that. She imitates him all day. It's, Andrew? It's awesome. Andrew? Yes. Do up the suitcase of memorabilia and go to bed. <laughs> And thank you. Thanks, Danny. Thank you, Andrew. 7 to 11.